I want to talk about the vector equilibrium. And this is a shape that I make out of um, Q-tips and floral wire. It's a very important shape. Uh, Buckminster Fuller introduced us to this shape. I believe it was him. Anyway, here's a quote from him about the vector equilibrium and balance. Equilibrium between positive and negative is zero. The vector equilibrium is the true zero reference of energetic mathematics. Zero pulsation in the vector equilibrium is the nearest approach we will ever know to eternity and God. The zero phase of conceptual integrity inherent in the positive and negative asymmetries that propagate the differentials of consciousness. Buckminster Fuller. He goes on to say, energy meridians of an organic body transport energy in order to achieve a return to singular harmonic unity. The vector equilibrium represents the balanced energetic bodies. Vectors represent the energetic meridians, and equilibrium is the balance strived for by the energy which is inherently intelligent, resilient, and desiring spiritual fulfillment to be balanced. Vector equilibrium is a balanced destination of the spirit's devotional noble pursuit. Vector equilibrium is the anywhere, any when, eternally regenerative event inceptioning an evolutionary accommodation and will never be seen by man in any physical experience. Yet it is the frame of evolvement. It is not in rotation. It is sizeless and timeless. Its mathematics deals discreetly with chordal lengths. The radial vectors and circumferential vectors are the same size. And in mine, they're all the size of a Q-tip. <laughs> but vector, going on with this, vector equilibrium is a condition in which nature never allows herself to tarry. Vector equilibrium itself is never found exactly symmetrically symmetrical in nature's crystallography. Every pulsative and impulsive, ever pulsative and impulsive nature never pauses her cycling at equilibrium. She refuses to get caught irrevocably, ir irrecoverably at the zero phase of energy. Everything that we know as reality has to be, the, be either a positive or a negative aspect of omni pulsative physical universe. Can't say the word. Therefore, there will always be positive and negative sets that are ever interchangeably intertransformative with uniquely differential characteristics. And I've been reading on this site a book called The Universal One by Walter Russell. And this goes right along with everything he is saying about the positive the negative, the in-breath, the out-breath, the, um, the contracting and the expanding and the pulling and the discharging and the charge. All of that he's talked about really is, ex is explained with this vector equilibrium, which I am playing around with because I like to play around. I don't study the sacred geometry in the sense that I understand all those mathematics involved in it. I wish I could, but I haven't tackled that yet. But I do look at the form and play around with it. And I've noticed that the vector equilibrium, if you cut it in half and turn it inside out, it makes the Merkaba. Well, the Merkaba is supposed to be our light body a vehicle for ascension. And ascension would be to return to God consciousness is what I think of ascension, what it would mean. Well, this is the God shape. And if you take it and put, take it in half and turn it upside down, it makes the Merkaba. Now let me show you how that happens. Here I have in clay made the um, vector equilibrium out of clay which is in two pieces and I have one half sitting on top of the other but if you take this and uh, split it in the middle 
and turn it over, then it will look like this. And here we have turned it the other way around so that now it's upside down, topsy-turvy, and we have the Merkaba. So actually, I think the um, vector equilibrium is actually the Merkaba. It's the place that represents God, and the Merkaba is supposed to be the light energy body that helps us to ascend back into the oneness of God, the perfect balance. Now here I've put it together a little differently. I was taking a clue from Nassim Harriman when he was talking about Metatron's cube, and he saw the four tetrahedrons together this way. And so I put them together that way. And when and this is just another view of it, is three tetrahedrons with a fourth one nestled down in the middle of those three. And when you make eight of them, which each one is, represents four tetrahedrons, put together you have the vector equilibrium again. And of course the vector equilibrium is also the Merkaba. So it all just goes to well, together so well, but there's even more that I will be showing you that this can do. Now, this that you're looking at here is still made with Q-tips and floral wire and uh, clay. <laughs> and the clay made it very big. This is a heavy object. But what I want you to know is that inside of this is, guess what? The vector equilibrium. It's in there. It's what I structured this around. So not only can you cut it in half, turn it upside down, and make a Merkaba, but you can add to it as well and make another Merkaba. And the way I do that is I came out from the squares because there's six squares in there that are one half of an octahedron. But I give it its top half is what I do in order to make this structure you see here. And then I bring the four points of the Merkaba onto each of those parts of the top half of the octahedron. So this is what it makes. Here's another version of it that I painted. To It shows it maybe a little better because I have that colored. But inside this, and this is a close-up, you see in there the gold part, that is the vector equilibrium. So you can build upon the vector equilibrium and make the Merkaba again. And I'm reminded of something Walter Russell said in one of his books that was a quote from what God had spoken to him, which was, I am inside everything, centering it, and I'm, I am outside everything, controlling it. And so we might think that you would see the vector equilibrium inside of the platonic solids. And you do, because inside of this, at one stage of building this Merkaba, it was the octahedron shape until I continued adding more of the little tetrahedron points. And I think this is a very important uh, shape here. I don't know that I've seen it on any of the um, other sacred geometry sites. But it, this is real fun to make and it's interesting. And everybody thinks I'm crazy because I'm in my room just slapping Q-tips together in clay and I do this for hours. I've made several of these things, but I'm finding out stuff about this sacred geometry. It's a different kind of finding out. I, I don't do mathematics, but I actually get the feel of it by getting kind of emotionally involved in what is this going to turn into? Oh boy, you know, it's just like, okay, what can I do now? So here we have uh, the vector equilibrium, and I give it a squeeze, bring four points of it together, and keep pushing it together, and it makes this, which is like a double-sided cup. And I just arbitrarily said, okay, this is the chalice, this is the cup. This is what we're trying to find. Everybody has been looking for the, the, you know, the chalice, the cup. Maybe this represents it, just my thought. So stay tuned to part two, coming up next.